Hey there, everybody. Michael Bolton III here with Lazarus Tall Raven. I know you guys, miss, guys have missed me, but I'm finally here. Uh, we have Fatal Ascension versus uh, Kill. Versus Kill Lazarus with a Fire. <laughs> kill with Fire. <laughs> Faye's fielding yep. two Jaguars, two Kitsunes, two Slenders for us today. While you have I Kill with Fire with two Enyos, three Enyos, Oracle, Oneros, and Curse. Looks like uh, most of these guys warped at range on the FA side. And then you have close the Kill with Fire Enyos. Yeah, a little information. The FA team had a whole host of problems. They had uh, corpses in their hold and one person ineligible here. Uh, you have got dropping those medium shield rep bots. Going to try and keep their team full of that delicious health. Uh, Laz, what do you think of these setups? Well, you get the FA team, which is a variation that we've seen so far of the dual Sletner setup. Um, what's odd about the FA side is they do not have a logistic ship like all the other standard Sletner setups. So it's going to be interesting to see how quickly they lose these ships uh, as you see the first kit soon go down for FA. Yeah, we're also losing the Enyo on the Kill It With Fire team. Those Enyo is a really strong ship after the uh, Assault Frigate buff. Probably the best Assault Frigate. They're so, they have so much damage with those blasters. And we have another NU already tackled going down. We see a lot of E-War effects on the Fatal Ascension Slipnirs, but I don't really know if it's taking much effect. Well, a big thing to notice about the E-War going on to the Slipnirs is with the curse, you have about 42k uh, newts with uh, level five recons. Uh, so the curse can newt out those uh, Slipnirs that takes out their MWDs, takes out their uh, shield hardeners, and it's gonna make them a lot more vulnerable to uh, the low DPS of the Oracle and curse. Uh, all three oracles are or uh, Inyos are down for the kill it with fire side. So I mean, they're they're starting around ships. You have these Sletners, uh get jammed being applied to the Narrows and the Oracle as the FA team starts trying to take out that logistics so they can whittle, whittle down the Oracle's uh, plated uh, tank. Yeah, the the the, uh, the tackle on these Jaguars is just so strong that they just racked up those Enyos so fast. And I don't really know if they have enough with just the curse and the Oracle applying DPS to really take out the other team. Although Fatal Ascension has no logistics, maybe an oversight on their part. I feel like if they had the logistics, they would have this match locked up, but as of right now, it's still a little bit in the air, as long as they can get this Kitsune down. Well, see, I, I, that's, I disagree with you there. I think that this match is locked up for FA. Uh, that logistics is going down pretty quickly. Uh, they're probably gonna get rep drones on that logistics from the curse. Let me zoom in. Um, but right now I still see ECM drones on the field. So uh, you're not going to see reps coming onto the curse. It's going to. It's not taking any damage. I'm not sure if they're either jammed out or can't track. I'm. It, it's weird. I don't know. It's the owner. The Oneros is holding an armor pretty strongly. If those jams break and they can get damage onto the Katsune, I feel like I, I don't know. It's close. There's probably the tracking disruptors coming from the curse are really strong. Uh. What do you think about the Oneros versus the Guardian in terms uh, the of Neros, the rep for this kill with fire team? Well, the Oneros is much like the uh, like the Scimitar but with shields. Is that it is cap stable without having the bouncing cap uh, the from the cap transfers? Uh, I think it's a good choice for a team like this because you don't have a large ship, a battleship to sit there and circle with it, uh, circle chain cap with it. And as you see, the Inaris is starting to enter half armor. It is running local armor reps. Um, once this Inaris goes down, you're going to see everything else follow very shortly after. As uh, Just like on the FA team, they could, didn't even have enough DPS to break a Kitsune. Yeah, like you can see that, oh, the tackle was just dropped, but the, the Inaris is tackled right now. Probably that uh, tackle is being muted out every once in a while. Uh, but once it's tackled, those tracking disruptors aren't really doing as much, and that's where you can see that DPS coming in so strong. Well, they, they had a good a good idea with the uh, curse itself, because uh, capping out those, those Sletners is going to take a lot of DPS out of the way if they can kite away from the autocannon range. Uh, with autocannons, you're looking at about 20, 25 effective range, uh, so... It's, it's, it was really a toss-up. It was a, a shot in the dark, I think, with the curse, uh, but just the Slepner setups way too strong, especially with the oh. jams from the Kitsune. Only a little bit more damage. Oh, and down goes the Oneros. Uh, I think that's going to be probably be locking this one up for the Fatal Ascension team. But uh, I really, I feel like the Curse is a really good ship in the 12 man teams. I don't really think it brings what you need for the six man teams. I think it's like a great addition to those larger teams because it provides 
attract disruptors and the newts and you just be and it's very strong also with its drone bay uh and we're about to see uh the oracle go down in just a little bit here and there it goes and that's going to be closing this one out i think yeah, you see, you, as so far in the term, you see a lot of ancillary current, uh, or not current, but still only shield boosters, and that's giving a lot of tank to these battlecruiser-sized ships, especially the Sletner. Uh, this team just didn't have the DPS to be able to break this uh, this type of setup. Yeah, that curse really is great utility, but doesn't have that DPS. I think they were relying on those Enyos for their DPS, and with the, they got racked up so early in the match that they just had no chance to break the other team, even without a logistics ship. Those NUs, yeah. I think, were probably the core DPS of that team, and uh, they just got tackled so fast. They were warped to zero on the beacon, so they had no chance to sort of get their movement and get their separation going. Yeah, as I said earlier, without the uh, FA did not bring the logistics ship, the Scimitar, like all the other Sutler setups. Uh, I, I really liked the setup. It was different out of the box it, with the two assault frigates and the two uh, electronic attack frigates. Um, I think the jams really did help take away some of that DPS or that early, the early uh, newts from the curse, and I, and they just, like you said, they just completely wiped out the Enyos early. What do you think about the choice of the Jaguar? Uh, the Jaguar is an extremely effective ship. Uh, if you look at the slot layouts on the Jaguar as well as the Wolf, um, I think they added one of the, la the last few patches, a mid slot to the Jag. I'm not sure on that. Yeah, I believe uh, so. I think you're correct. Oh, but and you have... that will wrap up the match. I'm a little late on that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a really strong showing by FA, and uh, like the Jags, four mid slots, four lows and four highs. Uh, very effective assault frigate for shield tank or shield based setups. It is important to note that Kill It With Fire did get some points, so they, we will get to see them uh, next weekend. And they have a slight chance to make it into the group play. That's going to wrap us up. Uh, can't wait for the next match. Thank <laughs> you.